Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen video stuff on the worlds. Uh, so a while ago I did a brief look at improving frame rates and settings for Star Citizen. Today I'm going to expand on that and talk about a few simple setup things you can do for your PC, as well as more advanced things. But it's going to be uh, looking at the right drivers and making sure you've got the settings right, making sure you've got your .cfg files set up, uh, getting SLI and Crossfire working, all that sort of jazz. Uh, a simple but ultimate Star Citizen setup kind of guide thing. Uh, anyway, check out the description for links to further resources and more in-depth info on each of the subjects that are going to be covered. What you want to do, in my opinion, for setting up system settings is setting your page file correctly. You want to put it on the hard drive that Star Citizen's on, um, and then setting up your page file correctly can increase your system performance, uh, load times, and system stability. So, let's show you how to do that. So you want to go to your control panel first, so um, there's a couple of ways you can get there. Um, you can press Windows key and E and bring up this menu, We you can right click on my computer, uh, you can click on the taskbar down here, um, but I'm going to go on computer, open control panel, then you want to go to system, and uh, then you want to go to advanced system settings, this will take you here, you want to click on advanced, and then you want to click on uh, settings under performance, uh, then advanced again, and then change. You then want to find what drive you've got Star Citizen installed on. For me, it's my gaming drive. Um, you want to unt untick automatically manage paging files for all drives. Uh, and then you want to set a custom size of approximately 1.5 times your system RAM. That's the best i found, personally. Um, so for me, I've got 16 gigs system RAM, so I'm going to set this to 24,000-ish. Um, so I set my initial size and my maximum size the same, and set okay and then restart i've also set um, this is my where my os is installed i've got a separate drive just for my operating system uh, and i set that to uh, 250 megs um, max size and min size and the reason i do that is because it improves my boot time and um, so that that might help you as well don't fiddle around with it if you don't need to because this is for star citizen this isn't for general boot up uppiness now something else to turn off that's important that some people haven't i'm sure a lot of people have it's mouse acceleration. I hate mouse acceleration. It's the bane of all gaming. Right, so you want to go to control panel again. And you just want to check. You, you, I don't care if you know, you think it's off. Just double check. You want to go into your control panel and you want to click on mouse. Oh, it makes me angry thinking about it. Then you want to click on pointer options. And you want to make sure that enhanced pointer position is off. This is mouse acceleration. Mouse acceleration scales your movements so that when you're moving, you can basically move large distances quicker. This is awful for aiming. And if you've got that on, immediately make sure it's off, apply. Um, and a lot of people will notice <laughs> Vandal Swarm and just in general dogfighting, you're now able to aim. And in just games where you thought you couldn't aim before. A lot of people know about that, a lot of people don't for some reason. And a lot of people have kind of forgotten about it after various installs of Windows. So make sure that's off, guys. You want to set your main monitor, the monitor you're going to be used to play Star Citizen, to the highest usable refresh rate you can. The higher refresh rate basically means the smoother the movements you'll see um, and just looks more silky to your eyes. It's the only way I can describe it. Some monitors will only be able to take 30 to 60 hertz, whereas this monitor that I've got in front of me will take 144 hertz. Um, the, there are ways to overclock your monitor as well um, that aren't too dangerous um, <laughs> uh, that I'll put in the uh, description below. There will be a link there of how to do it because even an uh, increase from 60 to 66 is actually quite nice and you will notice the difference to the, like, the way it looks. It, it just looks silkier. It's the only way I can describe it. So you want to right click on your desktop, um, you want to click on screen resolution and then you want to select your main monitor that you're using uh, and then you want to click on advanced settings. Uh, monitor and then select your uh, refresh rate. Uh, most of the time it will be uh, set to 60 hertz. You should be able to get some more out of it. Um, my monitor, as I said, can take 144. Some monitors will only have 60 hertz. Some of the 4K monitors will only have 30 selectable. Um, as I said, you can uh, overclock. Links in the description below. Um, but also, if you're using uh, multiple monitors to render, so you've got multi, if you've got a multi-monitor setup and you're running Star Citizen over three, like two monitors or three monitors, set your refresh rate to the highest that is common between all the monitors. So in this situation, if I was running Star Citizen across my two monitors here, um, the highest refresh rate of my secondary monitor is only 60 hertz. So I would set my primary monitor also to 60 hertz. 
But fortunately, that's not the case. I only run Star Citizen on one of my monitors, so I can have it at 144 hertz, which is nice. It looks pretty. So if you've got a multi-GPU setup, so if you've got SLI um, or Crossfire or just a multi-GPU card, then Star Citizen might not be using it correctly. So what you want to do is go into where Star Citizen is installed. So for me, that's uh, Games, Star Citizen. You want to go into the Star Citizen Citizen Client, and then you want to find the System config file. You want to open it in Notepad. Now mine's already set up to open in Notepad. And you want to add the line R underscore multi GPU space equals space one. This line here and then save. And basically that will now enable your multi GPU to be usable in Star Citizen. Should give you a few extra frames per second if you hadn't noticed them already. They can cause some artifacts but in the latest version 1.1.1 I haven't really noticed any um, uh, with the latest NVIDIA drivers I have. So hopefully that will be the same for you guys. So it's worth creating a user.cfg in your Star Citizen folder. This will basically apply settings every time you run Star Citizen automatically so you don't have to open the console. Um, and it's really useful because you can get some really great extra frames per second. You can turn off stuff you want to turn off. You can fiddle around with it. It's just quite nice. Um, so you want to go into Star Citizen folder, go into Citizen Client. Uh, and then right click in Citizen Client and create a, a text document and call it user.cfg. Here's one I made earlier. Now you can see mine is already filled out. I will link you to a video I've done previously explaining uh, the different um, settings or at least going over a couple of different settings types. If you want to get a crappy slow laptop working, it explains how to do that. There's already a profile I've already done for that. Um, and if you want to get some fiddle around the settings just to get more frames per second or better quality, you can also do that. I'm only going to go over a few of the settings, um, especially ones I had, didn't go over last time. Um, setting R gamma to 1.1 here is really good. It will increase the brightness of the game, but not too much. Um, there are some situations where you do actually want the gamma to be a little bit higher, and the game's gamma is quite low. Uh, you want to set your sys max frames to whatever the refresh rate of your monitor is, in my opinion. Um, that will mean that you get the most silky and um, best performance. Uh, so my monitor is 144 hertz. Um, if you're recording um, or uh, you've only got a 60 hertz monitor, then just set it to 60. Um, V-Sync, V-Sync equals zero is off. So you want to turn off V-Sync in my opinion, unless you're getting screen tearing issues. If you're getting screen tearing issues that annoy you, then turn that on, turn that to one. Um, and then you can, on your control panel uh, for your graphics card, you can um, go to control panel and then either set uh, V-Sync to on as well, or V-Sync to adaptive. Adaptive V-Sync mode is the best V-Sync mode in my opinion, if you have access to it. Um, but don't worry if you don't, or don't worry if you don't know what I'm talking about. Try and set it off unless you get problems. So I've got some other settings here, like depth of field and motion blur and stuff to zero. So these are all things that I just prefer being off in game. So they're um, literally blur effects, so when you turn quickly, stuff blurs. If you're focusing on a, an, an image or zooming in or something, uh, the stuff around it will blur, or you get head bob. I turn all that off, it enables me to play a bit better. Um, down here, these are a couple of quality settings. Um, I set this to 16, you can set it to lower. 16 gives um, really great quality, and it's not a particularly intensive setting. Um, and Syspec uh, texture is makes textures look pretty um, but can be a little bit resource draining. Uh, the rest of the settings here I've explained before, I've, as I said I've linked the video there. Um, the reason I set my Syspec sound to is it actually improves, um, well it reduces the amount of weight that's on my CPU, the CPU load, um, and enables me to get better recording performance. Um, that's where I set it to 2 and doesn't seem to impact too badly on the sound. Uh, right, so the other setting people were asking me for the other day is anti-aliasing. Now. Um, you can force anti-aliasing on with some of your graphics cards um, by going in your control panel or using um, NVIDIA and Respector, that sort of stuff. Or you can set it here. Now here is a list of all the different anti-aliasing modes you can do. Um, remove the semicolon. The semicolon basically means that it's not being read by the file. Um, so uh, if I put semicolon enable console, it's not reading this. This is telling me what it's doing. So um, removing semicolon here would then activate anti-aliasing mode equals 5. Um, I'd also remove this because that's not supposed to be there. Um, it's just telling you you can set it between 0 and 10. 0 would be off um, and all the settings do different things. Now my preferred method of anti-aliasing is FXAA. It is fast and it still does a nice quality which looks good when you upload videos to YouTube. Whereas other anti-aliasing modes might be better and give better quality 
um, but they impact frames quite a lot, and you can't really tell that much of a difference in my YouTube videos at the very least. Um, so FXAA is always my preference here. Uh, I'll leave um, all of the um, different settings in the description as well, so you can have a look at them more closely in case it's a little bit blurry or something, or you can't zoom in here. Um, fill around with them, see what's best for you, and they all do different things. Um, SMAA is different from FXAA, is different from TXAA, which is def different from MSAA. So have a look at all of them. You then literally just need to make sure you've saved uh, the file um, as user.cfg and then Star Citizen, every time you launch Star Citizen, it will automatically read that file. And the same with the system file. Um, the system file, the reason you put the uh, GPU uh, data in there is because it doesn't work in user a .cfg for some reason, it only works in system. Um, so you have to put the multi-GPU setting in the system file. So it is also worth setting up a profile for your graphics card for Star Citizen. Um, and I only have an NVIDIA card currently, so I am going to show you how to do it on an NVIDIA card, and I'll try and link to something how you do it on an uh, AMT card, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty similar. So you right-click uh, con NVIDIA control panel um, on your just on your desktop, then you want to click on Manage 3D Settings, um, you then want to go to Program Settings, Add, and then you want to um, add Star Citizen. Um, it will, not the launcher, you want to actually add Star Citizen.exe. Um, that will add it as Squadron 42 Star Citizen. So now you've got a load of settings which you can set. Now, um, I recommend leaving everything alone and, I, and, then I, and then explain what you should change if you want to. Anastropic filtering, I like to always set on 16 times. It's a very fast filtering process that shouldn't impact your frames that much and make stuff look quite nice. Um, I've forced on uh, FXAA using a program called NVIDIA Inspector, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, this is my preferred way of doing anti-aliasing, especially on my card. Uh, I turn it off in the Star Citizen uh, user.cfg and allow this to do it, because it seems to give me more frames per second and it looks good. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why, it just does. Um, so. Everything in bold I've changed here. Um, I, the main things to change are make sure your multi-display is set to single display performance unless you're uh, running Star Citizen over multiple monitors. Um, and then you want to set your power management uh, to a prefer maximum performance. I have set some other stuff here. That's just for um, my personal preference. Uh, I've turned off a couple of things, stuff that was, uh, wasn't giving me stability correctly or whatever. Um, but those are the, the, the main settings that you want to change. Let me just show you, um, apply that uh, at the bottom, apply, done. Um, then you'll have a profile that every time you run Star Citizen it will automatically run. Uh, you want to download this program called NVIDIA Inspector uh, if you want to force on FXAA. It also gives you the ability to do a few other things which are pretty cool. Um, literally just download it from the link I've got in the description. Uh, once you've downloaded it, just run it. Just run it. And then click on this uh, bit, it will bring up profiles for uh, all the different games that you have. So you've got your base profile there. I'm going to bring it up Squadron 42 again. Um, so I've got my Star Citizen profile here. So I set it to uh, Crisis um, and the Inclusion Mode because that's the closest thing I could find to it. Uh, I fiddle around with a few other settings. Kind of for my own personal preference. Um, you can see that basically it's just a, a elaborated, crazier version of that profile we were just looking at a minute ago. But the thing you can do on here is you can set um, where it says here NVIDIA predefined FX. AA usage, you can set to allowed, um, and then that will allow you in the other profile to turn it off. Um, when you're done with that, you literally just apply settings. I'll save this profile and I'll chuck it in the description um, as a link, so you can just use my profile because I've tweaked around with a load of settings um, that seem to give me slightly more frames per second and made stuff look relatively pretty and didn't give me any issues. So just some basics about drivers and software, really simple stuff. Make sure you've run and installed all the latest service packs and updates for Windows. I recently upgraded to Windows 8.1 from Windows 7 and was actually surprised that my system was a lot more faster and stable, um, especially after I installed all the latest driver updates, all the latest service packs, all that sort of jazz. Um, it's definitely worth grabbing the latest BIOSes for your motherboard and graphics card. You have to go to your uh, hardware manufacturer's website for that. Now, you don't have to do this, I, I prefer doing it because it's normally quite simple to do. They, they normally have a little utility that will update your biases for you. Um, and it can improve stability quite a lot and it can give you a little bit of performance sometimes. I just like to have everything at the latest standard. If you feel uncomfortable doing it, don't. Don't do it. 
Um, make sure you've got the latest in drivers installed for your motherboard and graphics card too. Um, I use a program called Driver Booster as well. Now Driver Booster basically updates, um, it looks at all your drivers on your computer um, and tries to update ones that are out of date. It's free, uh, it's really useful, I'll put it in the description below as well. So just some other points of note, if you're installing Star Citizen, try and install it on an SSD, on a solid state drive. It's a no-brainer in my opinion. Star Citizen is pretty much unoptimized, and even if it weren't optimized, then putting it on an SSD just makes sense. You're going to get much better load times, stability, and performance. If you're installing an SSD though, um, and you haven't got one yet and you're installing it, make sure you're using the best SATA cables you have available. I was using old SATA 1 cables until recently on my SATA 3 drives and I only like a couple of weeks ago realised that so I've just updated all those cables and I've got much better performance now. So some people have been having monitor ghosting issues and I used to have the same problem a while ago. It turns out that my uh, cable from my graphics card to my monitor just wasn't able to ha handle my res or refresh rate. So just make sure you've got the correct cable that supports your resolution and refresh rate needs. Uh, I upgraded to a HDMI gold played 1.3 something or rather. So just double check what monitor you're using um, and double check what cable you've got already and you might just need a better cable. Also, the new generation of graphics cards and CPUs are about to come out, so it might be worth waiting if you are considering upgrading your hardware at the moment. But the NVIDIA GTX uh, 970 and 980, as well as the uh, AMD 290X and 295X2 are all extremely great cards. Uh, I did a few tests with some of those cards a, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. I'll put the links in the description as well so you can see some of the results. Thank you very much for watching guys, I do hope that was helpful or at least informative in some way. Um, you can really help me out by, if you have any topics or settings you desperately want me to cover, please put them in the comments below, uh, as well as if you know any settings that are really great, um, you think I've missed anything, uh, you've got any conflicting ideas that some stuff didn't work for you or whatever, please put in the comments as well and we'll try to either fix them or add them. Um, I will continuously compile guides and that sort of stuff as each of the versions of Star Citizen comes out. Please take care guys and I'll see you in the verse.